Recently, I took part in a Reddit Ask Me Anything. I don't really know why I did exactly. Maybe I wanted more people to be aware of the sacrifice I make every year and the sacrifices my family has made over many years. I think I also wanted to show everyone that there's a lot more to this world than most people realize. And a lot of that isn't cute and cuddly. It's scary and evil. Unfortunately, only a few hours after I completed the AMA, it was removed, as it didn't follow guidelines. Luckily, however, I'd already saved all of the questions and the answers, and so I'm able to still share them with you. I believe it's important for more people to know about my work, and so these questions should help give you a better understanding of what it is I do. What turned out as a fairly innocent AMA slowly started to devolve when one of the people asking a question revealed that they knew a bit more about this entity than they first let on. The following is the complete transcript of my Ask Me Anything that was titled, My Family Has Spent Generations Protecting the World from an Evil Entity, AMA. User Graphy23 says, So, what is this so-called evil entity? I respond, I knew that this would be the first question asked. I'm not entirely sure how this entity came into being, or how long it's been here on Earth. It's called the Wayfarer, and what we do know about him is that he's trapped between our plane of existence and his own. He lives anywhere and is always traveling, he wanders wherever he wants and will visit wherever pleases him, but he cannot interact with anything from our world. He is in our world, he just isn't a part of it. User Doc32 says, How many years have your family been hunting this thing? I respond, It's been my family's job as far back as we trace my family line. At least 200 years we've been protecting our world from this entity. Currently, it's my responsibility, but before it was mine, it was my father's. My grandma was before my father, and then from there it stretches back for centuries. The responsibility will probably pass to my children when I'm too old to continue hunting. User Wordsword says, What does this wayfarer look like? I respond, There have been many depictions of him throughout time. Many ancient books have mentioned his name. Often people have sighted a figure in the distance, and when they go to approach it, it fades away before their eyes. Some depictions of the Wayfarer show him as an old man with a long scraggly gray beard and a small top hat and a long walking stick. Others show him as a naked hairless man with large, deep black eyes. I have ever seen in an old book a small description that read, The old man wandered aimlessly through the desert sand. His tattered clothing was almost tearing off of his body. He made a small click sound with every step, like his knees were making it. As I approached him, he turned and faced me with eyes of pure black, raised his hand, and showed me a strange candle. Then, he disappeared right in front of me. I'm still unsure exactly what he looks like, but from what I've read, it seems that appears in the shape of an old, weathered man that carries around a large stick. This may be accurate, or it may not be. In all depictions, however, he is always barefoot. User Metpow says, How do you protect the world? What is it that you actually do? I respond, Well, every year the Wayfarer can pass one object through his plane of existence into ours. It is then when he will pass through a large candle. Every year, the location of the candle is different, and it's always random. It is then my responsibility to find and light the candle before the end of the year. If the candle is lit, then it will close the hole that will form that would allow him to pass through into our world. If the candle remains unlit for a year, then the hole will grow big enough for him to pass through. And once he's here, 
there's no stopping him. User Prodisk says, is it your full-time job or uh, is this something you do part-time? And if it is a full-time job, how do you make money? I respond, it is definitely a full-time job. The candle could be located anywhere in the world, and so I need to spend all of my time trying to find it. It is definitely hard work, and it is most definitely time-consuming. In regard to money, well, my family's been lucky. They've stumbled onto wealth throughout our many years of exploring the globe trying to find the candle, so now money isn't really an issue for me. User Leprechaun the Cobb says, Have you ever seen the Wayfarer? I respond, Personally, I've never seen him myself, but I've heard countless tales that involve him. One that springs to mind at the moment is a story I was told by my grandmother. She believes that she once caught a glimpse of him, and so her story is as follows. The candle was within my grasp. After seven months of searching, I'd found it. All that was left to do now was to light it, and then it was done for another year. I reached out my hand to grab hold of the unlit candle, and as my hand drew nearer to the wax cylinder, I felt something watching me. I can sense eyes peering straight into me. I knew something was close by. They were just watching, like they were unable to do anything else. I stopped my hand just before it touched the candle and looked around to see what was looking at me. I saw two dark black eyes staring at me from the other side of the room. I only saw them for a moment and then they vanished. I knew it was him watching me. He was disappointed that I'd managed to find the candle. The wayfarer was angry. User Stuart Big says, How do you even begin to find the candle? Like, it could be anywhere. I wouldn't even know where to start. I respond, That's the other thing about me and my family. We have a sort of gift. We can sort of sense the candle. You know how kids play that game hot or cold where they try and find something and someone says that they're getting hotter if they're close or colder when they're moving further away? Well, we sort of have that ability built into us. We can tell when we're moving closer to the candle and we know when we're moving further away. Of course, these days, other technology is also used, like GPS. But our ability to sense the candle is still the most effective way to find it. User Whitney Houston says, Have you found this year's candle? And what will happen if the Wayfarer makes it into our world? I respond, Unfortunately, this year's candle still hasn't been found. I believe that it's close to being discovered, but in all honesty, it's taken longer than I would have liked to find it this year. And to answer your other question, if the Wayfarer was to break forth into our world, with him, he will bring chaos and disorder. He will bring cruelty and despair. He will bring death. It's been written that the Wayfarer has no other goal than to spread pain and suffering to wherever he travels to, and it's believed that he will travel across all lands in our world, destroying each one slowly, before moving on to the next. I don't know if this is exactly true, but it's not something I wish to risk. User Mimic43 says, What if this is all fake and there is no evil entity? Would you have just wasted your entire life fighting something that doesn't even exist? I respond, I truly believe that he does exist, and that I'm helping the world by not letting him enter it. I've seen the candles, I have lit the candles, and like I said before, I would rather light them each year rather than just leave it and then find out the hard way that he's the real deal. There are also others that believe in him too. Unfortunately, they wish for his coming. They want him to arrive in our world, and they welcome his suffering. I have never met any of these people either, but I've heard stories about them. They wish for the candle to stay unlit. User Witch16 says, 
what's the strangest place that you found a candle? I respond, I have found many candles in weird locations. I found one in the Vatican City, in the deep jungles of Peru, and then one was found near the Big Banana in Australia. I really have seen most of the world in the hunt for the Wayfarer's candles. User Vagabond says, Is the candle a light red color with strange gold markings that run along the entire length of it? I respond, Yes, that is it exactly. How did you know? User Vagabond replied, I think I've managed to find your candle. I came across it only the other day. I reply, I would most definitely be interested in coming to check it out. Would it be possible to DM you to find out your location so I can come and have a look at it? User Vagabond replies, I don't think that's a wise idea. I found the candle, and I am going to keep the candle. It will remain unlit. I think it's time for the Wayfarer to make an appearance. I will make sure that he is granted passage into our world. You have no idea how long we have waited for the candle to fall into our hands, and now that it has, the Wayfarer will rise. We will witness his birth and his uprising and his untold might and fury. So, if you want the candle, you're going to have to come get it yourself. It was at this point that I knew that user knew a lot more about the Wayfarer and about the candle than they first let on. I knew instantly that something wasn't right. Like I'd answered earlier, I'd heard of people that actively tried to accommodate for the Wayfarer's arrival, but until then, I'd never actually met someone that would actually want him to be allowed to travel to our world. And what made this whole situation worse was that he also claimed to be in possession of the candle. If that were true, then everything is about to turn to shit. The Wayfarer's arrival could be imminent. I needed to track down this person and find the candle. I didn't know exactly how to do that, but I thought I would try one more message. I sent the following message privately to user Vagabond. If you are truly in possession of the candle, you need to set it alight immediately, or allow me to come and see it. I promise you, you do not want to see the Wayfarer. I don't know what you think he is, but I promise you that no good will come of you not lighting the candle. And I beg of you, please allow me to see it. I pressed send and then anxiously awaited a response. It didn't take long for a message to come back. It was short, but it was enough to send shivers down my spine. It simply read, the vagabonds have awaited the Almighty's rise. The candle shall remain unlit, and he will walk the earth. It was useless. The person wasn't going to give up the candle. I was going to have to go and find it myself. I still have until the end of the year to retrieve it and burn it. I still have time. I hope it's enough. It has to be. I sat at my computer, rereading the short conversation I'd had with the person in possession of the candle. I knew I had to find it, and quickly, I was planning out my next course of action within my head when I felt someone watching me. I turned around sharply, and just for a split second, I saw them. The two black eyes staring at me from the other side of the room. I know what I saw. He's watching me. He knows I'm getting closer to his candle. He knows I won't stop until it's lit. As soon as I saw his eyes, though, they faded into the darkness of my room. He's not yet strong enough to pierce through the barrier that blocks him from entering our world. But soon he could be. Unless I find the candle.